You're talking to me? Why are we talking to you? Exactly. Okay. Big one for your Friday morning, guys. Why are we talking to you? It's a segment where you guys um, will meet someone who has made headlines around the world. You, But first, you have to guess who is coming in or who is on the phone. Okay. Ooh. And so I say who is coming in because today's one has a twist. The celebrity or person is not on the phone. They will be joining us in the studio. Wow. Okay. Wow. Okay. Uh, do you want to start your guesses? You've so told me it's we, a big one on a world scale. Yeah. Are they very handy with a tennis racket? No. Oh, no, well, actually, I don't know, but that's not right, what they're not known Ashbardi. for. Okay, cool. Are they, um, are they British? Yes. Are they Ooh. female? No. Are they in the sport industry? They are not in the sport industry. What about music? They are in the music industry. So it's not Prince Andrew. Well, he might sing. You don't know, but he does in the is show. It, is it? Are, are they? Did they? Have they? Have they got a hit song, Tommy? But it's not like a pop song. It's sort of like a cheesy kind of, you know, kids sort of. Oh, interesting! Viral. Um, they have many hit songs. I know who it is. They are not cheesy, mm. but they are massive. Ronan Keating. It's not Gronan. Is it Robbie Williams? It's not. Robbie, Robbie. Well, it's Bobby not, Williams. It's not Robbie Williams. James Bro- Groban. Is, worth, is it Blobby Williams? It is Blo- No, it's okay. not Blobby Williams. British. Yes, British. Male big, music. Big in music um, for many years and many hit songs. Were his uh, songs used in films? Yes. Ooh, Tommy. As well as musicals. I can't it play is. along anymore. I know who it is. I can't believe it. Do it. I can't believe it. Are you ready for me to... Well, maybe you say it, and then we'll see if he appears. Ladies and gentlemen, Andrew Lloyd Webber. You are correct. Wow! Wow! The man himself, musical theatre royalty. We welcome you. Thank you. It is an absolute honour to have you in the studio. We welcome you. Um, This is a magical moment. Can you just... For clarity, um, can you give us your full name and title? Because I know James Corden struggled with it when we were watching the other day. Well, if you really want yes. uh, the ludicrous title that when I went into the House of Lords, which I'm not anymore in, actually. <laughs> it is, um, I think, well, I'm going to say, I think it's, uh, well, it's obviously Lord Lloyd Webber, which is difficult to say. <laughs> so, Sir um, Andrew, so, Andrew Lloyd Webber. No, you know, the Sir bit goes, you see. Right. Because I'm in right. uh, it, because I was in the House of Lords, but I resigned from it. Oh, it's another story. Okay. Um, oh. But the the full title is something like Baron Lord Lloyd, Lloyd Webber of <laughs> Sydenham and blah blah blah. Baron. But, is it? So it's it's kind of absurd. But um, I got got fed up with um, you know being in something which has got rather political. Okay. So, you know, so well, I'm not there. What does your driver's license say? Um, do you know, I don't drive. Oh, sorry. Okay. <laughs> what does your passport say? You've got one of My those. My passport absolutely says all of the whole thing. Yes. Wow. So, but it gets very confusing with immigration, you know, because yeah. nobody can quite understand <laughs> it. And it, it's, um, you know, actually, it's a bit of a pain. <laughs> it's an hour well, on actually, the incoming card, isn't it? Yeah. Sir, Sir Andrew, can I ask you then, what, what do you put on as your occupation on your incoming passenger card when you come to Australia? What do you put down? Well, I just put down composer. Right. I, yep. You know, I do so many bits and pieces. You know, it could be really one of them, anything. Once I used to put down Forrester because I had a forest. Um, <laughs> okay. Which, which um, because years and years and years ago, I mean, I'm talking years ago in the 1970s, um, the only way you could actually keep any money because the tax rates were so high in Britain was if you planted a forest. Right. So I was uh, told you've got to. Uh, actually plant a forest because at least you can keep something so absolutely fine um we were in the recording studios um olympic studios in barnes and i was recording don't cry for me argentina with a 90 piece orchestra wow and i get a phone call saying it's the army on the phone and i said why are you calling me and they said well because your forest is burning down oh, <laughs> oh no so i said i'm really very very busy I'm, and i promise you i'm it's absolutely true 
<laughs> that is amazing. That's my tax haven. Yes. Put the, the fire ta- out. Tax haven went. So the one thing that I could have kept. <laughs> oh disappeared. man! But when we look at you know your music over the years, and we all grew up with Cats, of course, and Phantom of the Opera, and mm, okay. the Vita, of course. Starlight Express was the first musical I ever saw. I mean, what you've done and what you've created, and the history and the legacy that you've 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 built with your music. It just, it's part of everyone's life. That must mean the world to you to see people still enjoying it after so many years. Well, it's fantastic. I mean, you know, but I like to keep going. You yeah. Know, that's it. You know, got Don't a new, wrap it up. Yeah, I got a new one in London that's a big hit, which is my version of Cinderella, um, which is really great because um, it was written with a girl called Emerald Fennell. Right. She won the Oscar for Promising Young Woman. Wow. And, wow. Um, so it keeps going. The next thing is getting that to Broadway and then, you know, I'm now looking for something else to write. So you still have drive, Andrew? Like, you st- creatively, you're still, you're still always putting yourself out there and trying to find the next one? Absolutely, yeah. I mean, at the moment, I'm just literally trying to find a subject that I want to do. And uh, it, 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 the thing about musicals is, is that the really successful musicals, with you know, one or two exceptions, but they're really story-driven. And I'm not talking about the sort of jukebox musicals or anything like that, but I, but a mainstream musical, it depends hugely on the story. Andrew, can I ask you, what what's the one musical that you haven't written that you wish you did? Well, there are loads of them, actually. <laughs> I mean, but West Side Story, obviously. Mm-hmm. I, I would say, um, you know, well, frankly, I mean, any of the Rodgers and Hammerstein ones. Yep. Um, mm. yep. A musical I absolutely could not have written, but um, and I know I could not have done, is Hamilton. Sure. Um, which is a fabulous, yeah. fabulous musical, you know, but um, that's a completely different genre than I can do. You know, so, um, but of, of the kind of, I think West Side would have to be, I mean, and then there's My Fair Lady, you know, there are all these great shows. And, mm. Uh, Rodgers and Hammerstein, I happen to love. I mean, I think Richard yeah. Rodgers is a fantastic melodist. Andrew, when you look at all the music that you have written over the years that everybody knows and through the Cats and all the musicals, um, can you remember, like, I mean, of course, there's so many songs you've written. You started writing at a very young age. Can you remember the first song you ever wrote? Not really. Um, I discovered when I was sort of going through a whole lot of old papers. I just yeah, right. A, 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 a set of music, I mean, which was published, which my father edited when I was about seven years old, called The Toy Theatre. So he was a composer as well, He was father. a composer, yes. He did. He edited this, which were my, obviously, baby tunes. Yep. So I went through them thinking... There must be some gold in here that I could reuse. Mm. They were absolutely awful. <laughs> <laughs> well, then, what, be, what I'd love to know, when you listen to, to, to music outside of musicals, what are some of the artists, modern-day artists, that you enjoy? Are you an Ed Sheeran fan? Well, I am a great fan of Ed Sheeran because I think he's a brilliant writer. You know, um, Adele, very, yes. very much. I mean, there is a lot of very, very good music out there at the moment. I'm not, I have to admit, I, I don't really get... Um, the more extreme areas of Cardi B, like yeah. that, I don't really get that because I'm melody. Mm. You yep. know, that's mm. that's where I am, and um, I mean, I'm un- unashamedly about melody. I mean, when I did School of Rock, which I, I wrote the music for that, wow. um, you know, that that was great fun because it got me back to the sort of rock and roll roots. Mm. You know, yep. so um, I think that came here, didn't it? Yes, absolutely, yeah, it's it's huge. When yeah. when your musicals are made into films, how involved are you in in that process, or do you hand it over with trust? Well, it it really depends. The thing is, is that say with Cats, the, the movie was sold. The movie rights, oh, thirty years ago now, right? It would have been. Then they get passed on and passed on, and uh, then they get made or not. I mean, I, I've. I, I, I'm not really that much involved with the films, no. What about Phantom of the Opera? Because I, I, I live for Phantom of the Opera. I love it. I remember the first time That's I saw Sarah's it as a life. child. I love it. I love it so much. And when it was made into a film, it was great. Cause obviously yeah, I was quite involved home. with the music side of that. Sure. Um, because you know they, they really did need me on that. But um, in a way, you have to let these things go. I mean, what's mm. exciting about the Phantom in the Harbour for me, which I've not yet seen, but, um, you know, Simon Phillips, who's directed it, is a fantastic director. He mm. did a wonderful job with My Love Never Dies. And uh, it's great to see sometimes a production done entirely differently to the way mm. that they've been done before. I mean, I get a little bit now I, uh, in my advanced old age. I kind of think, you know, I don't really want to go and see an identical production 
as, say, the right. one in London sure. or Broadway. And so it excites yes. me to go to see something completely different and see whether somebody's got a take on it with things that I didn't even see in my own show. Yeah, yeah. Andrew, when you, when, when you watch Phantom of the Opera now, and like you said, you, you know, if you do see it in the Sydney Harbour and that, is there also a little piece of you, because I'm just reading here, that Phantom of the Opera has made over $6 billion worldwide. Is there also a little piece of you that goes... Yeah, awesome. There's another royalty for me when you watch it. Oh, no, not, that is. Not really, you know. Um, one of the great joys I have is, is that, I mean, I own uh, six theatres in London and we run them yep. not for profit. And uh, in a way, um, one of the great things is to have uh, the luck that I've had in my profession. It's a wonderful way of being able to put things back is to do it through the theatres. Mm. Um, and also, I mean, I, I'm a great supporter of music in schools. And um, yep. so, I mean, I have a charity that really takes quite a bit of the money and then goes into goes into providing kids in, frankly, pretty pretty rough schools a free music lesson and a free musical instrument, you know, which, I, yeah. which I think is really important. But, yes. you know, I mean, but it's, it's very rare what you find theatre owners who are really doing it all not-for-profit. I mean, I had a most fantastic day yesterday and I went round Stephen Farn's theatres and you've got in Stephen Found an incredible person because he's not doing it for profit. Yeah. He's doing it because he loves theatre and mm. his buildings show it. And um, I don't know, I, I, I sort of really was pretty bowled over and had to say to him at the end, yeah. of it, you know, what you're doing is just extraordinary. Yeah, it's great that you're giving back. I mean, it's terrific yeah. when you knocked off Paul McCartney on Britain's Rich List as well. You got Paul over the line there. No, well, he's overhauled me. <laughs> Not after COVID, I have to say, because we were all pretty devastated. Of course. With that. And the theatres were, you know, that was the problem. I and mean, we, 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 uh, we were pretty wiped out and I had to sell one of them, which is a shame. Uh, can I ask a question? When you sit down and you think, I've got a brand new project, I've got a brand new narrative and a, a storyline that the structure of it is simple, how do you start? Is it you at the piano? Is it you trying to find the key parts to the music? Well, if say I've got a great story. Yeah. The the first thing I have to look at is why would it be a musical? What's the point? Um, and what can I bring to it that makes it um, actually different to what the story was before? Yeah. Um, and very often the stories uh, are not necessarily ones that have been huge, huge hits. I mean, if you go right back in history, as it were, with musicals, I mean, go, say go back to Oklahoma, that was based on a play called Green Grow the Lilacs that nobody really had heard about, you know. But what Rogers brought to that was an incro extraordinary score. Uh, and, and the way he would work and the way I work is, is that you look at the moments, you say, if I'm going to do this, why would I do it? And you find as it were, moments where you say, yeah, I can make that into something musical. I mean, for example, in Evita, um, I, I wasn't sure about that as a story at all. Um, mm. And then I thought, hang on a moment, if I could create a moment where uh, she is absolutely at her peak with a, with a song, mm. you know, which became Don't Cry For Me, Argentina, mm. and that mm. turns on her, um, and that in her final broadcast when she's broken, she can hardly get through the song, that's something which is theatrical. And I drew on something sure. which I saw in real life, which was Judy Garland wow. Wow. in her last mm. performance. Well, you but, saw that? Yeah, in her, I think it was her last performance. And she was frankly drunk she or was drugged broken. or both. Mm. And she tried to get through Don't, uh, Don't, Over the Rainbow. And, yes. Um, and, you know, it was like, and the audience was wow. booing and the thing and the other. I saw it again with Amy Winehouse, actually. I mean, long after, yes. you know. And you sort of saw this this little woman, you know, with Judy Garland, being crushed like a kind of... Somebody had got a sparrow in their hand and were just crushing it. Wow. It, was, it was... And it stayed with me. And that was the, if you like, metaphor that I found yep. for doing Evita. Right. I, I, saw, I saw a way into it. And um, in any story that I'm looking for now, I have to think, what's the way in and why would I do it? Yeah. Mm. And bringing that pure emotion to the stage. Or, or, or whatever, you know, whatever yeah. it may be. Um, I mean, I'm sure Lynn Manuel Miranda, when he was reading that long book about Hamilton, mm. I mean, mm. he obviously mm. saw, he saw something in it that other yep. people didn't. Yeah. And actually mm. made something far bigger as a consequence. 
We've had some so many great family moments with your musicals. Mm. I mean, the first time I saw The Phantom, I went with my grandmother, who was deaf. She was yelling out a lot. Um, oh, he's got his mask on! All that yeah. sort of gear and the chandelier that comes down at the end. Oh, here comes the chandelier! You're deaf. Just stop yelling. Um, <laughs> Cats was another special moment. And when there was the interval, um, I went missing. And I was up on the stage sitting on Mr. Mistopheles' oh, yes. knee um, saying hello to everybody. You're marking and, your territory. No, well, yes. I wasn't urinating at all. But um, then that started, you know, the second half started and mum and dad didn't know where I was and the other thing I wanted to let you know Andrew was that I'm sort of the musical one of this show oh good um, oh, and no, not. it makes me a little bit nervous um, I was a big fan of cats I'm a big fan of cats as I mentioned the family is but I wanted to present something for you today that I've written myself um, not so much composed but I've composed the edit of the track you might say um, and then I've put some words together but I'd love to get your feedback oh. if that's okay I'm a gog okay <laughs> as polite as you can be about this. Well, that's right. Um, It's not about cats, it's about dogs. Um, Ah, I've got one of those now. What dog have you got? (laughs) I've got a little Havanese. Havanese? Yes, I bought this little puppy when I saw the Cats movie. I thought I'm going to have to move on from this. (laughs) (laughs) Well, maybe this song will support your new pet. Um, Have a listen, Andrew. Here we go. My tail will tell you if I'm happy today. My tail will tell you if I want to run away and play. Want to run away and play. My tail, my tail, my tail, my tail. My nose will tell you if I'm healthy today. My nose will sniff out all the food you want to throw away. I'll find it anyway. My tail, my nose, my ears. I am a dog, just like a god. Yes, spelled backwards, not that it matters. I am a dog, your four-legged friend. I've got a fetish, I'll sniff your endish. There's just one more thing I've been meaning to say. I left a surprise on the rug because you went to work all day. I am a dog. Just like a god Yes, spelled backwards Not that it matters I am a dog You're All right, Sir Andrew Oh dear Well, you know <laughs> Leslie Brickus Who is one of the great songwriters of all time Yeah Wrote things like Who Can I Turn To You know, and all that Beautiful um, music He did a musical called Dogs oh, It sadly never got on It didn't you know, get up No, no Maybe you so could reinvigorate you see, the project with that now, admission Now, you see, that could go into that There could be a potpourri oh. could Okay. Uh, dogs, you know, maybe of the, the musical. It sounds very, very see, professional, see, see. I must say. I didn't know that dogs had big orchestras, but now I know. Yeah. They do, uh, as cats can. Um, is that guy, what was his name? Is he still around? Leslie he... Brickus, no, sadly he died oh, last year, but he was absolutely extraordinary. Okay, well, it looked like it's left to me then. Yeah, it does. Andrew, it looks as if the mantle has fallen on you. Okay, but it generally had the parts required for a musical... Well, it has that sort of quality of an opening number, I guess, you know. <laughs> uh, but the number. question I... is, where do you go from there? <sighs> Feels like a sad day for musical I, I, theatre, doesn't it? I don't know what was worse, mm. the actual song or actually seeing Whipper doing dance moves. Mm, I well, am a dog. I, I'm not commenting on that because I'd never comment <laughs> on other people's music unless I can help it. OK. <laughs> but... But, that, but I, I think it's, you know, it's, it's definitely worthy. You know, we should send it to a couple of producers. OK, so worth polishing up a little bit? A little bit, yes, okay. I think, you know. Right, well. One of the songs that Leslie Brickus wrote, which is I always amused me, was titled A Lamppost, A Postbox, A Tree. And you can right. probably imagine the kind of gist yes. of the lyrics. OK, yes. well, we're in the same and ballpark. It was called It's a Dog's Life, actually. All right, well, uh, what, what I might do is... Um, yeah, I might polish that up a little bit again. A little bit to you, oh, Andrew. Yeah, I was with I Leslie's think... people, and yeah. then you're away to the races, yeah, really, aren't you? You might have to put that song down, like like the dog. <laughs> I think there. Whip, it was a good try, Whips. Yeah, thank you so much, um, Andrew. We thank you for coming in yeah, today. Thank you. Of course, we want to celebrate the uh, Harbour experience as well. Hand Opera on the Harbour. The Phantom of the Opera plays exclusively in Sydney from tonight. Get your tickets at opera.org.au/harbour. We can't thank you enough for finding the time for, mm. to join us. No, thank you. And I'm going to sing I Am a Dog all the way out of the studio. <laughs> what an honour. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> oh, yeah. Thanks, mate. I am a dog. <laughs> I'm an absolute dog. Thanks, mate. <laughs>